Hey guys and welcome to our course for HVAC systems for electrical engineers. In this part of our course for electrical design, we will focus on the HVAC system. We would like to understand the different components in an HVAC system for electrical engineers. Now you may ask me why do we care about HVAC systems? Because as an electrical engineer, we would like to provide electricity to different components in each HVAC system. For example, we will have fan coil unit, we will have air handling unit, we will have heaters, we will have pumps, we will have chillers. You'll see different components in an HVAC system. All of these needs power from electrical panel, they need circuit breakers, they need cables, they need disconnect switch. So all of these we need to understand what are the components and then we are gonna design each of these uh, electrical parts. So in this lesson or in the first one, we will start discussing the meaning of an HVAC system. What does it mean or the abbreviation of HVAC? So HVAC here is abbreviated as heating, ventilation and air conditioning. So an HVAC system does three functions usually. Uh, especially in a commercial building on a or in a large uh, building like a hotel or anything. So for example, heating, it provides heat. If you would like to, uh, in winter, for example, if you would like to heat the rooms in a building, then you can use the HVAC system to provide this. Second the function, which is ventilation. And what I mean by ventilation is bringing a fresh air into the building or the commercial building or administration building, air conditioning providing cooling to our building. So heating providing uh, in winter, air conditioning or cooling, which is um, used in uh, summer in order to cool the building and ventilation is bringing fresh air to the building. Now, for example, if you look at your own house, we will find that we have an air conditioning system. An air conditioning system, one of its types is the split unit. As we will see in the next lesson, when we talk about types of HVAC system, this one is split unit, meaning that it is uh, the HVAC itself or the air conditioning system is, is split. And what I mean by split, uh, the indoor and outdoor units, or it is split into two parts you will see that we will have an indoor unit and an outdoor unit. Now let's see how does an air conditioning is used to cool down a room inside a, a, a building or any uh, residential place. So how does an air conditioning work or an EC work? So let's start. So we have the first component which is called the compressor and condenser the compressor and condenser which is in the outdoor unit outside of your own house you will when you look you open the window and look outside you will see an outdoor unit this outdoor unit contains a compressor and condenser so let's start what i mean by this this is the out uh, or the outdoor unit as you can see here now in this outdoor unit, we will have a refrigerant. And what I mean by refrigerant is that a liquid or a gas that is used in air conditioning system or refrigeration systems. So you will have to understand that the concept of cooling in air conditioning system is exactly the same concept that we use in refrigerators in your own house. So the First, we will have a liquid or a gas, it dependent on what we are talking about on or what state we are talking about. We call it the refrigerant, the one that is used to cool the system. We have different ones, R22. Uh, all of these are different refrigerants dependent on the manufacturer and the application. Now, one of the common ones which you will have, which you already know about, is the called the Freon. 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 Okay, the free yarn. So the free yarn is used as a refrigerant to cool the, um, to cool a room or anything. Let's see how it does work at the very beginning. So in the outdoor unit, we have the compressor. So let's see. So we have in the outdoor unit, we have a compressor here. 
which will take that refrigerant so it takes that refrigerant like this and what does it do to the refrigerant like freon or any other refrigerant what does it do it compresses it so it compress compressor what does it do it compresses this liquid or this one so when you compress this one what will happen to it as you know from physics when you compress a gas it will become uh, its temperature will increase and its pressure will increase so when we do this for example that temperature of this freon or this refrigerant will increase to around for example an 80 celsius degrees or 176 fahrenheit so that is the first component a compressor that compresses this refrigerant and path it through at a very high temperature to a condenser you can see these tubes which is the condenser and we have a fan around it you will see that if you look at the outdoor unit you will see this fan which is exactly this one so what will happen is that this hot this hot refrigerant it is hot yes after compressing it as you can see here we cool it down by using a fan so this fan will dissipate this heat to the outdoor or outside to the atmosphere so this fan here as you can see it just dissipates and cool down this refrigerant after it is compressed so for example if it is entered at a, as an 80 celsius degrees it will cool down to let's say for example 50 celsius degrees and when it cools down since it is compressed and high temperature it is entering in the form of gas so the refrigerant after the compressor as its temperature increase it convert it is converted into gas now when it cools down it is turned to a liquid as it condenses that's why it's called a condenser because it condenses the gas into liquid form now what will happen next is that we will have a lower high temperature a uh, lower uh, lower temperature but with a high pressure as before nothing changed at all so as you can see that the hot high pressure refrigerant gas when it flows to the condenser it gives its heat out the outside air using this fan and starts to cool and condense to convert from gas into liquid form now the temperature drops to for example 50 celsius degrees so you have a compressed gas that is cooled down to 50 celsius so 50 celsius degrees and it is still compressed okay it's still compressed now what's the next step the next step is that we have two components indoor called the expansion valve and the evaporator so what happens exactly so when you look at this one this uh liquid entering here like this like this this one is the 50 celsius degrees liquid form of our refrigerant now when we have we have this valve this valve what does it do when this one enters and goes out of it its pressure will be reduced it expands this liquid so since it is was already compressed when we expand it what will happen by logic when you expand this liquid its temperature will drop significantly so you will see that its temperature will drop to around 5 celsius degrees now you will ask me how it drops to 5 celsius degrees we already when we so for example what happens here is that before it compresses let's say it is 30 celsius degrees now you compressed it right so it goes to 80 celsius degrees and then we cool it down to 50 celsius degrees however remember it is still compressed now when you make it go to the expansion valve it turns from the compression into expansion right as if it is before this stage however it is at a lower temperature so instead of going back to 30 celsius degrees it will go now to a lower temperature let's say 5 celsius degrees so you have a cool refrigerant this is the principle that we use in the refrigerator and um, our uh, air conditioning system and then what will happen then this uh, liquid which is 5 celsius degrees what we are going to do is that we provide it to the evaporator 
and do you ask me what is exactly an evaporator so we provide it like this so we enter it at long tubes which you can see like this this is what we call the evaporator why it is the evaporator you will understand right now so we have here a five celsius degrees cool liquid let's say freon a cool liquid of freon and then what we are gonna do is that we are gonna have here fans here inside this indoor unit this is the indoor unit which you always see in your own room that gives you cool air so what will happen is that we have some fans here that will drag air warm air warm air from your own room and pass it through this cool liquid pass it through this cool fence okay or this cool evaporator now when this warm air passes through this one its energy or its heat energy will be transferred to this freon right so this warm air will cool down and then we can pass it back again to the room as a cool air which you always see in your own room so the principle is here that we dragged we absorb pull a warm air from in our from our room and uh, pass it through this evaporator and then it cools down and gets back to the room now you will ask me why is this called an evaporator because we have here a liquid we have here a liquid free on let's say at five celsius degrees now when warm air passes through it it transfers its energy or its heat energy to this freon right so its temperature will start increasing the freon will start increasing until it converts into gas once more by the effect of warm air inside our room so you can see it converted from liquid form into gas form or evaporates that's why we call this one evaporator because it converted it from liquid form into gas form so you can see that the refrigerant enters the evaporator as you can see here this evaporator and absorbs heat from the room the refrigerant will evaporate again and temperature can increase for example to 10 Celsius degrees all of these numbers can change again from one gas to another one manufacturer to another okay it is not standard uh, they are not standard values now after evaporating the refrigerant gas will enter the compressor once more so we have here a hot gas a hotter gas of freon and it will return back through another valve get back like this to get back again to our compressor which will be compressed again and the cycle will be repeated so this is how a refrigerant or um, an air conditioning or a refrigerator works this principle is actually is used in uh, almost every uh, appliance that uses um, the cooling principle now for the air conditioning system this is a summary of what we have just said you can see that we have a compressor that compresses gas so we have here a cooler refrigerant not very cool a cooler a cool refrigerant let's say for example at a lower temperature and then let's say nine cel negative nine celsius degrees again this numbers can change from one infection to another all of these are examples so we have this temperature here and we pass it through the compressor which increases its temperature like you can see into gas form and then using the condenser and the fan it will cool down hot air will go outside and then its temperature will decrease let's say for example to 20 celsius degrees and then we will have the expansion valve that will expand this one before since it is compressed and make it at a very low temperature and then when it passes through the evaporator its temperature will increase again you can see from negative 18 to negative 9 celsius degrees so this is the cycle of air condition now you may ask me so this is for cooling right okay this is for cooling what about heating okay in heating we have a uh, in inside our air conditioning system we have a, a reverse valve we call this a reverse valve now what do you mean by reverse valve in reverse valve we reverse the cycle and instead of giving the 
after compressing the gas we don't provide it to the con condenser and release heat energy to the air and instead we provide it into the reverse direction we want it to be hot gas going to this evaporator okay so we will have a hot gas here that goes directly to our room so when we do this we provide hot air to our room and we start cooling it down so when we have a hot air you will see that this expansion valve will be reversed it will start reversing the process like this so instead of going like this in our cycle in our cooling cycle we are going to do the reverse we are going to go like this so that we can provide that uh, hot air or hot gas to our uh, evaporator and then uh, it will absorb all of the cold air from the room and heating it or increasing its temperature.